Hi, welcome back. Uh, so at my last trip to Lumberyard, uh, where I got the slabs for, uh, of walnut for the shot glasses, uh, the guys there gave me two blocks of this. Uh, they don't know either what it is. Uh, I don't have a clue uh, what it could be. Maybe Iroko, something like that, in that um, nature. Um, I did cut off a little bit of a slice like this and uh, I'm going to make a box in this video um, but also to, to, to see uh, once I cleaned and oiled it uh, maybe I have a little bit better idea what it is so um, like I said I think it's uh, Iroko but not quite sure and uh, it has a nice distinguished discoloration oh it's like almost perfectly in half so that should be quite nice a uh, little box so okay so i have a bigger jaws here and this just goes in like so for now and just trying to see to get it back to original position although i have actually here um for a tail stock i can align it that way I think you saw what's missing in the previous shot. I forgot to put the banjo on the lathe. Um, I was doing um, for a thumbnail uh, a few pictures and uh, forgot to put the uh, tail stock in. Oh, the banjo, sorry. Uh, one inch skew. I'm just going to screw it up again. Okay, so that's mostly there are a few bigger chip outs but i'm nowhere near the finished shape so i can put this around to shark jaws uh, just to remove this uh, square here at the end that actually doesn't feel that bad maybe it was just the weird grain on this end yeah that's actually pretty good so you can see a little bit better now how the grain looks and uh, now what I'll do is make a actually I'll chew this up first So I just put a little ridge here, a tenon, um, that way I can flip it one more time and position it up to that tenon, that shoulder. Yeah, that's pretty close and now I'll just uh, chew it up one more time and uh, that will be for the final shape. to the end as well uh, now before I start to part anything off uh, what I'm going to do is put a little tenon here and let's see about the box proportion so one two three let's say I think that will be okay proportionally and uh, we need a bigger flange for a pop fit so here so yeah I think we'll part here and the lid will be somewhere around here now I don't have any narrower 
um, parting tool, uh, but it's quite close, uh, straight grain, and uh, this coloration is actually quite uh, even as well. So I don't think that that will be um, like much of the misalignment of the of the grain. So. Oops. Now for this parting tool I have to make a little bit more of a relief cut. That should be enough to break it off. So uh, this is the base, and this is the the, the top. Uh, now for the shape of the the box itself on the outside, I'm going to make a sort of a uh, simple shape, uh, but we're going to decorate it with lots of beads. So all the way around. I hope um, it will. Uh, sort of accept the the bead beading tool so they all symmetrical um, quite good so uh, this is 10 mil spindle gouge actually I'll make a little hole here I think that will be enough, maybe a little bit more. So that's rough opening and now with the square and scraper I'll just make the flange. Uh, but I have to leave myself enough room or thickness on the outside to accept the beads. So this is the square and scraper and you have to bring the rest up so only this corner will have the contact with the wood, not, not uh, the bottom one. Because if the bottom one will be in contact, then it will uh, push the scraper away from the, uh, the line that you want to go. So. And I want a fairly long flange. Now if you wonder why I wear gloves, uh, it's uh, actually below 10 degrees here in the, my shop, so it's quite cold. Um, yeah, I think I'll expand this a little bit more. And at this point, I want this flange to be parallel, perfectly par parallel, or uh, just slightly dovetail. So the opening here is just a, a smidge smaller uh, than the back of the flange. And the way I check it, I don't have the calipers that expand. So I put the ruler here, press it quite hard here, and I watch the bedways, uh, what's happening. So uh, yeah, that's now, um, the opening here is wider than the back, so I have to take nothing at the opening, but a little bit more on the back. If you get this step right, then it's actually quite easy uh, to get nice suction pop fit. So again, place the roller, and uh, by the look of it, that's almost perfect. So I'll leave it as it is. Um, what I'll actually just try to do, as it seems a little bit rougher, the sides on the flange, uh, I'll use a skew. But this bevel side here, you'll see where the dust will come off. Hope you can see. 
just really light scrape. See if that's a little bit better surface. So I don't have to sand as much. Now the opening is okay, but the back side is a little bit rougher. So this will be a quick little box. I know a lot of turners, especially the beginners, like to turn boxes and uh, I like to turn boxes as well. So And uh, now I have to do uh, something with the bottom here. So I have a um, asymmetric curved scraper. Now I can make a little bump at the very middle. To make it look as a decoration as well, so. Just see how that's working. Feels okay, and it is okay, so. So I can uh, just do a little bit of sanding on the uh, on the inside, polish that, and uh, then we can uh, do the outside. So here is my inside, uh, and that's pretty much where I want it to be. So I'll just part it, start to parting off here. Just do a little clean up here. Um, yeah, I can send the, the inside and we'll do the final shape on the outside after. So now for the finish, I'm going to use this uh, Clapham's Beeswax Salad Bowl finish. And uh, I started to really like this product and uh, it's so easy to, to apply. It's natural and you can apply it with your hands. So it's quite nice and uh, just buff it in with a paper towel. I might even put the, the, the wax on top as well just to seal it in so it's not tacky. And I think I'll do that as well. So just push a little bit of wax inside. Should be it. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's really super nice. I'm happy with that. Um, so I can part this off entirely now. So that's the lid done and uh, actually still have a little whoops a little bit of wiping off yeah but that's it and um, now we can go for the base and here is the base but i always like to make a little skim cut and clean up the top now the first task is to make it make the flange really nice and tight here so I'll use a skew getting close Almost there. Make another slight taper and that should be actually it. Yep. So I'm not sure if you can see, but at the very opening there is a slight burnish mark. So that tells me that's where the perfect fit is. 
just to see it one more time whoops that's actually I went a little bit over it's not loose but it's actually spinning off so I still have a that amount of flange to go so or I can make it a little bit wider like so and I'll trim this one here okay so that's now just barely fits over which is what we need and I'll clean up the shoulder here That's really nice tight fit which we want and I think I make, <laughs> made a mistake oh okay it goes off so I thought it would be a little bit more hassle to remove it now you make this first um, so you don't um, go over when you hollow so now with the hollowing I want to go maybe here don't want to make this super thin maybe a bit less than that so again I can drill the hole with the spindle gouge I use the bigger spindle gouge to take the majority here out. You can use a square and scraper. But this is really fast method. And uh, now with the square and scraper, we just uh, make the the shape the inside what we want and uh, I'll go with uh, slightly narrowing oh, narrow opening but then it gets wider as I go down so so I start to curve the scraper now here I'm taking way too much wood so So remove all the extra so I can thin this down a little bit more My scraper uh, now with sharpening it's almost straight across and I want to change that and I'll drop the right wing uh, just a little bit more so it only cuts with this portion uh, now it's just taking uh, too much edge at the bottom where the end grain is so I just back down on the right wing and uh, that should help out with yeah it's much better it doesn't put the entire edge of the scraper at once at the end grain so I'm trying to find the bottom of that hole which is here and I'll drag the scraper across the end grain to get the most clean cut the 
the inside just apply it with the finger spread it around especially in the corner just to see if I covered everything uh, yes I have which is good and uh, just again polish this up a little bit and then I'll push the wax inside just to seal that in so it's not as tacky so you melt the wax on the opening and then push it down gradually and then everything mixes nice looks quite nice yeah that's pretty good so the lid can come on and uh, now we can shape the rest here the top at least and start with the beads and then uh, we'll reverse the base and finish the bottom of the base again trusty one inch skew I'll actually go like low peel I'm going to make a cylinder on the side like so We'll clean the top here. Nice clean cut to the middle. Okay, that's okay. And uh, I want a little round over here on the top and we'll do the same on the bottom and uh, just to actually see if the green aligns and yeah I still have enough wood there and just to check if I have for that round over on the bottom as well so yeah it should be okay we'll see I guess and I'll try to match the green just to see how it looks Yeah, that's pretty, pretty close. I'll mark it. Um, let's go with, I don't know, eight mil, maybe a bit more. Let's go with 10 mil mark. So here, and on the end grain, and I'll do the same on the, on the bottom. Just with a little bit of 180, I'll sand the top as well. Okay, so now the fun part. So I have a beading tool that I made. Uh, this is the high-speed steel uh, bar for metal working lathes. And uh, what I've done is uh, took the grinder, the handheld grinder, find the right disc, and uh, just make the slots and sharpen them you can see how they look violent on the underside so yeah not sure how this will go but we'll see uh, I might want to leave a gap doesn't matter that it's a joint here uh, but I think I'm going to leave a straight on the middle here And I think I need to drop the rest a little bit more.
Okay, let's see how that's rolling. If there's any major chip out, yeah, that looks good. The bottom one is slightly weird looking, so I might have to clean it by hand. So let's go around with uh, one bead here. Okay, that looks again nice and We'll continue to the middle, I hope. So here at the corner, have to be careful not to ruin the, the bead here. I think that's actually quite good. Now the middle part I'll do with uh, skew. Just give it a little corner like so. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. That takes this wood takes the uh, the beading tool quite nice. Uh, so I have a decision time. Uh, should I go with the beads all the way down or to leave something here uh, to be distinguished a little bit differently where the seam is. Um, start with the beads. <laughs> uh, now, I didn't know what to do with the uh, seam here, so I started with a little bit above, above it and now I have, you can see a chip out right in the middle. It's not in the middle of the, of the bead, so what I can do is I could remove this a little bit or or, or, yeah, I'll continue on with the beads and I'll see with the seam what I'll do later, so. So again, I don't know where the camera shut it off. Um, but I still have a little bit more here to remove. Like so. So I'll sand uh, these beads that I've done and then I can uh, adjust the fit of the lid. Okay, so now the fun part to make the fit here which is already quite good but it's actually a little bit tight on the very bottom so i'll just grab a little bit of 360 grit and just do a few strokes on the bottom of the tenon or the flange and i think that should work quite nice Thank you. 
the, the fit is quite good. Align the grain. Yeah, that's that's really good. So, okay, so I flip around and now all I have to do is bring this down to original diameter of the beads here and uh, this is all waste so Uh, so for now that will work and again here I'll put 10 mil and 10 mil here and make a round over as well Okay, this one turned out quite good. And here on the bottom, I think I'll leave uh, this bead as a foot. So, yeah, I think I'll do that. So, this is now okay. the skew I'm just going to give this a little bit more like a groove so it's nicely distinguished so yeah I think that will now be okay inside and a little outside let me just put the focus on automatic so it doesn't blur off so we can see and the lid and just align the grain it kind of looks neat and as you can see the the bead sort of disperses the overall grain uh, but it does like show a little bit as you can see nice discoloration line between the darker and the lighter wood and here is a little bit more obvious line and the nice pop fit so nice little box with the beads on top uh, which rolls down and uh, goes all the way to the bottom.